Hello and welcome back to Flight Level 180. This is another FSX video of uh, a Feel There product this time and we're reviewing and doing the official walkthrough flight for the ERJ-135 regional jet. Uh, this is a Feel There product. It's available on Steam. It's an add-on to, uh, to FSX. Uh, I like it in general. It has some issues. It has some challenges. Some of those, some of which I'm going to help you uh, get around with this video. But uh, let's let's take a look at it and see how it looks. So what I'm doing is I'm giving you a walkthrough of the. Uh, let's go ahead and show you this. This is the manual that comes with the Feel There products. Come with manuals, and they're somewhat similar to the PMG manuals, and they're really well done. Basically, it's an 80-page document that explains incredible detail on how to how this uh, product works so it's going to tell you how to configure the product in windows and how to s configure the airplane it's going to give you extreme detail about the systems of the airplane i mean look at this it gives you a four page four page description of how the bleed air thermal anti-icing anti-icing system works i mean it's it's amazing uh, it's really nice. It's got far more detail than the crappy Carinado models have. Uh, it's a really nice manual. And if you read this and understand it, you are going a long ways towards learning about how to operate this airplane. And if you aren't already an expert in FSX or aviation, how to fly an airplane. So the thing I like the best is about these manuals is these quick starts. So basically they're giving you a quick start introduction flight. And in this particular airplane, there's two flights. The first flight is the one we're going to do today, and it explains to you how to configure the airplane, start the airplane, start the engines, uh, configure the autopilot, configure the navigation systems, how to take off, how to navigate uh, using the instruments, uh, how to set up for an ILS approach, how to follow an ILS precision approach, and how to land the airplane. Uh, I, love, I love this approach to learning how to do flight flights on flight simulator because it really teaches you a lot of detail and if you understand everything here and you practice this you will become a much better pilot it's really excellent now there is a second uh there is a second one here let's see if we can find that this is the fms training flight so this is a second flight from a different airport and this one is a steaming pile of poop this flight is really bad there are so many discontinuities in this where it's essentially impossible to complete the flight based on their directions. Uh, so feel there if you hear this, fix this up and get a new manual out. This is just, is just ridiculous. But so I'm thinking about figuring out how to make this flight work and and get everything working correctly, but it's going to take some work. If you're interested in that, leave me a note in the show description, and if you know if I get a couple requests for it, I will probably uh, do this one. But it, it is certainly not a good training flight. But this first training flight that we're going to do today is very good. There's some issues. It's not easy to figure out. So, so if uh, if <laughs> you will learn a lot just by going through this with me, I strongly follow along that you suggest that you follow along with me in learning how to do this flight and you will learn a lot. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, so the first thing you want to do is, so first of all, we have the Steam. This is the product on Steam. I picked it up for $12.49 in the Steam sale. Even at the full price, I think it's a decent, it's a decent deal. Uh, there's another one that's, uh, that's very similar. That's just one airplane. It's the 145LR, I believe. Do not buy that. It's the same exact thing as this product, except for this one, you get two planes. Just buy this one, it's, it's good. Um, so once you have that purchased and you have it installed in your FSX, you wanna to go to Steam Tools. So this is in the Steam client, you go to Library Tools, and then you're gonna find this item right here, which is the 135, 145 LR configuration tool. You right click install, then you right click and run tool. Once you have that done, you can it will pop up this window right here. So it's basically the configuration for the airplane. Do the things I've checked here. To load manager, you wanna choose the 135LR and you wanna set your passengers about this, about 35 and the cargo about 29%. If you're doing the 145, you know, do the sliders about the same percentages across. Leave the flight director pressure and weight as is, leave the displays as is. 
Uh, for startup though, very important, you wanna be dark and cold, then you hit okay. Uh, I've already configured it, so it doesn't matter for me, but the first time you run it, you wanna restart Flight Simulator. So once you start it, go to free flight, choose the airplane. You can do the 145 if you want. I'm gonna do the 135, which is the smaller airplane. Uh, you're gonna change your location to Grant, Grant County International, which is KMWH, which you've done here. And you wanna set your parking to S Parking Aid. Once you've got that done, you want clear skies, you want daytime. Uh, for your first flight, you probably don't wanna fly night here. Uh, fuel and payload, go and change fuel, make sure you're 50%, 50%. And don't want to mess with anything here and go ahead and hit fly now. So let's go ahead and get this airplane started. Now, one of the things I find a bit annoying about some of the airplanes in FSX, and this one is no exception, is that when you get into the game, it will frequently just start taxiing away on you even though the engines are off. So the simulation is paused. I'm going to hit unpause, but watch, it's going to start gliding away. So you got to get ready and hit control period to turn on the parking brake so it doesn't go driving off through the fence out there. So a bit annoying. So let's take a peek at the airplane. So overall impressions, modeling is good. Hello, Captain. I'm not a big one on cosmetics for airplanes, but if that's your thing, uh, this one's not bad. It's, uh, it's a very old looking airplane. It looks like it's 25, 30 years old and it's been through a lot of flights, uh, but that's okay. I mean, that's what you're flying here. You're flying an airplane that doesn't, is not incredibly modern. It doesn't have auto throttles. It doesn't have auto brakes, but it does have some nice systems in it. So. You know, you need to decide if this is something that you want or if you want, you know, if this is this plane is going to make you do a little bit more work. So let's go ahead and pop into the cabinet, into the cockpit and get things started. Shift 2 brings up the overhead panel and most of your work is going to be here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the batteries. So you're going to use the center mouse wheel and slide it, slide it up and that will pop up that. Okay. Once you have that done, we are going to turn on the fuel pump power so we can turn on the APU. So we're going to do tank 2. And then we're gonna turn on the APU by using the center mouse wheel and sliding it over to start. And if you peek down here, you can see the APU is spooling up. So as soon as we're at 100%, we can turn on the avionics master switches. So it's almost there. These are the avionics masters. By turning off the lights, we'll turn them on. There we go, avionics are on. Now we're gonna turn on all our lights. So click, click, click. Uh, taxi, let's go ahead and turn that on. Logo light on, fasten belts on, no smoking lights, we'll leave our landing lights off. Okay, so we are now, now we need to turn off all the lights. So this is cold and dark, I'm sorry, uh, black panel logic up here. And I'll explain to you in a bit what that means if you don't know. So after you do that, you're gonna open up the engine uh, control containers and the uh, covers, and the way you do that is you right click right there. And that clicking, that beeping is getting annoying, so let's click this. On the panel, you just click the caution button. So to turn on the engine, we're gonna do this. Now, if you forget, like me, to turn on the IPU bleed, you're gonna have a problem. So you click the APU bleed and start the engine. And you should see the numbers start spooling up here if I did everything correctly, there it goes. Now, uh, let's turn on the second fuel pump while we're waiting, looking good. And we have the uh, one nice thing is this, this airplane has checklists. I think it's a really nice touch. So let's slide this down a little bit. So basically the way this works is you can do an engine startup checklist. Engine start checklist, engine one. So now he's told us we need to start engine one and he's gonna wait until the engine is fully started. And once that's done, he's gonna tell us to start engine two. And on over- Engine two. So let's start that. Okay, so the checklists are great. The thing I find a little annoying with it is uh, if, let's say if we were to start with the dark and cold checklist, it expects you to configure the FMS and you can't get through the checklist if you don't do the FMS. Well, we're not doing the FMS on this flight, so that's, it's a bit annoying. So we can't use the cold and dark checklist, but some of them are nice. So this one will tell us when the actual engine is completely started. Uh, you can notice this one is starting. Sometimes the, the engine two will not start the first time, so you gotta click it twice. Uh, uh, black flannel logic, the idea is, is that- On, end of checklist. There we are, all done. So the idea is that all the, uh, anything that requires your attention is lit up, otherwise the lights are off. 
so it makes things very easy to figure out when you got a problem. So we've got issues here, so let's go ahead and turn all these off. Everything is off, looking good. Okay, now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna configure our FADEX. So these are the fully automated digital engine controls, I believe is the acronym. So the way to do that is you look down here, see how it's yellow, that means it needs to be configured. So you click that, you see the little icon there, it means we're ready to configure that. And to change your settings, you can just mess with this. We're just gonna use the standard takeoff one power level. Uh, outside air temperature is actually 15 degrees C, so we don't have to change that, but if we wanted to, we could just use this little knob right here, piece of cake. And then you hit, we don't need any anti-icing, so we're gonna leave that off, then you click it again and everything goes blue. Easy money. Okay, uh, we're gonna turn on the hydraulic electrical pumps. Turn those to auto. And let's go ahead and bring up the throttle quadrant. So you hit shift four for that. And this is down here, down below. So we're gonna set our landing field elevation. So the field we're at is 1200 feet and we're gonna take off, circle around and come back and land here is essentially what we're doing. 1200 feet, we're gonna to go to flaps one, which is nine degrees. So we're gonna hit F7 one time. And then let's turn this off and then the uh, the trim on the, for pitch is here, and we need to set this in the green range. Uh, in the manual, they tell you to set it for seven degrees, but I find that's far too much. So I like four degrees. It seems to be about right pressure on the stick. So set it for four degrees. And if you don't have that configured on your on your uh, on your on your uh, your joystick, you definitely want to do that. It needs to be configured on your joystick because you want to be tweaking that when you're flying all the time to get your pitch set correctly. Uh, so that is it. So last thing we need to do, let's turn off our overhead. Shift two to turn it off. We're gonna go to MFD and speeds, and we're gonna calculate our V speeds. So let's set calculate and very nice. It uses the weight of the airplane and the outside air temperature to figure out our V speed. So V1 is our uh, decision speed where we have to go or not go. Uh, our rotation speed is 114 and V2 is our single engine uh, climb speed, safe climb speed. So that is it. So let's go ahead and start taxing out the runway. Normally I'd configure the autopilot here, but just to save everybody some time, let's go ahead and start, uh, let's start taxiing. You don't want to give it too much gas here because this airplane does tend to get quick very fast. And there we go. So we're going, that is runway uh, runway 22 ahead of us. So we're gonna aim for that taxiway right there and go ahead and go there. So next things we need to do, we need to turn on the flight director. So you can see the pink line come up here. We wanna turn on our yaw damper, which I find a bit odd because it uh, decreases your ability to use the, the rudder and you really want to have rudder authority, full rudder authority uh, on takeoff. But anyway, they tell us to do it, so let's do it. Uh, we want to choose the toga cheat button. So typically the toga button is down here on the side of the throttle, but rather inconvenient to get to in a simulator. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the cheat button on the panel. And I'll show you that as soon as we turn on to our taxiway. There we go. Okay, and out to runway 22. So I'll show you where that toga button is. So that is here. So that will, so you can see if we hover over it, it says toga. So that will uh, set the uh, set the fade X correctly. And you'll see that as we start going. Uh, we wanna set the autopilot, the altitude. And in the manual, they tell you in the walkthrough flight, they say 28,000 feet, but I find that's just far too, far too high for the purpose of this flight unless you want to do some sightseeing. So I'm going to go to 20,000 feet. And what I'm doing here is I'm right clicking on the outside, right side of the altitude button. So left side, right click goes down a thousand, that goes up. And if you want to use a hundred at a time, you just hit the, uh, you just use the mouse wheel or you can use the left mouse button. Okay. And we're gonna to need to set the heading button as soon as we get out here, so. Okay, here we go. We're getting close. Let's go ahead and turn on our, let's go ahead and turn on our parking brakes with control period. Now, let's set our heading. So they want us to fly runway heading, which is 216 degrees. So I'm going to right click on the left side 
of this until we're down to 216. So I can use the mouse button to fine tune. Boom, 216. You can see our heading bug is here and our heading bug is off to the left there. Easy. Uh, that is it. Let's go ahead and set our lights. So shift two, taxi lights off, landing lights on. Uh, leave our AP on for the moment. Uh, next thing we're gonna wanna do is this is a gust lock which prevents the, uh, it's a physical lock that prevents the throttles from being advanced when you're on the ground. So you can turn that off by clicking that right there. And let's go ahead and release our brakes and hit our takeoff config. So this is a very Embraer okay. thing, this button. Okay. So everything is configured correctly as far as the uh, computer knows. So very, very, very Embraer thing to have that button. So here we go, rolling out on the runway 22. Let's check the ground. Runway 22, that's correct. Whoa, uh, I find this airplane extremely difficult to maneuver on the ground and uh, we'll talk about that a little more as we uh as we get flying but uh so here we are so let's talk about what we're going to do so we're going to power up to about 50 percent keep our eye to make sure everything is good on the panel there if everything's good we're going to advance full throttles and you have to be all the way forward for the fadex to work correctly if you're slightly off 100 percent, it doesn't work correctly once we are uh we start moving we're gonna uh, our co-pilot will call it the v speeds and you can see the v speeds over here on the left and we're gonna rotate at the rotate speed we're gonna pitch up to 14 degrees nose up as per the flight director uh, when we have positive rate we're gonna lift the gear we're gonna accelerate to 160 knots lift the flaps as soon as we're about 150 knots we're gonna turn on our autopilot by clicking autopilot altitude uh, speed to pitch for the current speed and heading and then we will be hands off. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna power up 50%, everything's looking good, everything's green, no ICAST messages, which will show up right here. Thrust checked. Okay, now do not be very careful moving the, the rudder when you're on the runway because this airplane, you can Speed see, it's just, just doing a little rudder movement. It's tipping back and forth. Uh, okay, 80 knots, 80 knots. cross check. Okay, we're approaching V1. our, there's V1. Rotate. Rotate, let's get our nose up. There we go. Pitch up to 14 degrees. Positive rate. Positive rate, let's put our gear up with G. Watch the, watch the indicator there. Gear is coming up. Nose gear is up. Gear up. Good, gear is up. Uh, we are almost 160 knots, so we'll turn up our flaps with F5. Flaps are coming up, and let's turn on our autopilot. Where nose is too high, so let's do this. Autopilot, altitude, speed, heading. And there we go. So now the airplane will pitch for 155 degrees, which is where I put the speed on. Oh, it's, okay, let's go ahead. I'm gonna hit FLC. It says engine, Emergency light not arm. So let's check that. That is here. There we go. That's off. Should have caught that on my checklist, but luckily the ICAST caught it. So there we go. So with the FLC button, we switched off speed, we went to FLC. So basically this is a pre-programmed uh, set of speeds based on our altitude uh, in the ascent. And the descent has its own thing, which we'll see at the time. So basically, since we're under 10,000 feet, it's gonna stay under 250 knots. So it's gonna, going to accelerate to 240 knots. And it, so and by accelerate, it's using the, the pitch of the airplane to control it. It's not using the throttles. Now, speaking of throttles, since we're climbing nicely, let's go ahead and set our climb fadex. Right now we are in takeoff mode, so watch this. See, it now says climb and notice the fadex uh, spool the percentage of N1 back a little bit to decrease our speed. So, and now the airplane will pitch down a little bit to maintain 240 knots. When we hit our cruise altitude, which is 20,000 knots, we're gonna hit this again, which is gonna command the FADEX to uh, decrease the power a little bit even more. And as I mentioned before, this airplane does not have auto throttle, so we're gonna have to manually set the speed so we don't overspeed. So, uh, let's see how things are going. We're at 7,000 feet. We're on runway heading. We are looking good. Let's go ahead and get rid of this window and go ahead and configure some things. So generally the flight here today is a big loop. 
so let's take a look at the map. So I went to world map, and here's the run the airport we just took off from. We're going to go out here in this general direction, then we're going to slide around here, and then we're going to circle up and land on the ILS going this direction. Uh, what they tell you in the manual is to fly the flyway, fly runway heading for up to whatever, however long you want, and then circle back. I find that a little boring, so we're going to do a little bit of navigation, a little navigation lesson for you. So we're going to fly to the Yakima VOR. So if you can see here, this is it. It's 116 megahertz on that. So we're going to set the Nav1 radio for 116 megahertz. So I'm going to switch to the 2D panel, which is Shift-1. You can see it's a little, little easier to work with. And then let's go ahead and set the, let's go ahead and set the Nav1 radio to 116 megahertz. So what you do is you click here. Let's get rid of this. It's going to get in the way. And it's a little hard to see with the, uh, my screen's cut a little bit, but you just get the general idea. So we're going to use the upper part of this button to do the, the big number tuning. And we don't have to do anything with the dot zero zero. So let's leave that. And then you click this. So right now it's on the MWH VOR at 115. Let's go ahead and flip flop that. Boom. So there we are. We just picked up the Yakima VOR, which is on 116, and it's 48.2 nautical miles to that. Now, if you look at, let's turn on the indicator to point to where that is. So if you turn on Nav1 here, that this line shows you what's on the Nav1 radio, and the VOR is slightly to the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our heading bug and just aim directly at that VOR, and we'll fly directly to that VOR by doing that assuming there's no wind but uh there's no wind in this uh in this setup so uh that's done so now we're getting to 10,000 feet let's go ahead and turn off our uh turn off the apu hit the stop button it's extremely loud and we're going to turn off our landing lights and looking good uh we're going to leave our seatbelt signs on no reason to turn that off down to 22 percent as soon as that's off we can turn off uh the apu completely here there we are. A little quieter in the cockpit now. Now, we are now headed for the Yakima VOR. We're at 12,000 feet. You can you notice that as after we got over 10,000, the airplane started pitching for 270 knots. And I think it might go up to 280. We'll see how it, what it does. But that's the FLC button. It's really uh, it's a nice little feature. So, let's go ahead and configure the rest of our radios. Uh, given that we're on such a short flight, you really want to be ahead of the airplane all the way through. So the first thing we want to do is let's set the NAV2 radio to point at the airport. So it's the MWH. Uh, MWH is the name of the, uh, the indicator we're going to. So let's go to NAV2. So click here. Boom. NAV2. And it's on 115, so that's correct. We don't have to actually change anything, which is nice. And then you can turn on the NAV2 indicator by doing that. And you can see it's pointing. I'll turn off NAV1 so you can see that. It's pointing directly back, basically directly behind us. And that makes sense because we're flying almost perfectly on runway heading. We barely had to switch our course. So that is good. Now, the second thing we want to do is let's go ahead. Since we know we're flying at the Yakima VOR, we don't need the VOR, the NAV1 radio pointing there anymore. So let's go ahead and switch our nav radio by clicking the one, two, and we're going to take and edit this and set it to the frequency of the ILS. Uh, we aren't going to be able to pick up that ILS frequency until we're about 30 miles from the airport, but that's okay. Uh, it's much better to have it configured in advance. So it's 109.5. So the upper part of this knob, we're going to slide down to 109. And then the lower right corner down here, you can just barely see, you want to use that and use the mouse wheel on that. And then we're going to click, and you notice here it's, oh, we're just barely in range. We're still picking that up, which is a little bit surprising. But that's going to disappear in a second, and it's going to give us an X, and this is going to be, notice this is ILS 1. The course is wrong. So the course of the ILS is 324 degrees. So let's go ahead and adjust that. So when we're right on the course of the ILS, it's going to be perfectly vertical, and we're going to be able to fly directly down that ILS. Now you notice we just went out of range of the ILS, it's now gone. Now, one thing I like to do is, and I strongly recommend this, is you turn on your NAV1 radio, your NAV1 indicator on the radio stack. And what that's gonna do, 
uh, is it's going to, when we get into range of the airport, you're going to hear the Morse code coming through that, that channel. And it's uh, beep, 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 just to give you the sound. Uh, and you'll see that. So it's a nice oral warning that tell you that you picked up Transition the, uh, altitude. you picked it up. So now we're at 18,000 feet. If our altimeter hadn't been at 2992, we'd have to adjust it here by just hitting the standard Project. button. Project. Good. Now, you notice here that uh, we just picked up the uh, NAV2. I believe that's NAV2. Yep. So there's NAV2. Uh, not quite sure what that is, but let's just ignore that for now. So the next thing we're going to want to do is, okay, we're approaching 20,000 feet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Uh, at 20,000 feet, uh, we are going to need to bring the power back. And we'll definitely overspeed at 20,000 if, uh, if we don't do that. So you notice it's an A-cell, A A-S-E-L, which is altitude select. And as soon as this changes to ALT, that means we're at our cruising altitude. And we can go ahead and hit the cruise button on the FADAC control panel, which is here. And that will set us to our FADEX, change it from climb to cruise mode. So one slightly annoying thing about this airplane is when you get to 18,000 feet, it jiggles up and down. It doesn't really hold the altitude for some reason. So you can't cruise at 18,000 feet with any consistency. 20,000 feet works fine. It's very odd. It might be a flight simulator thing, but I've never noticed it in any other airplane. So in a few seconds here, we're going to have, this is going to say altitude. And we're going to take and bring our set our cruise setting to there we go it says altitude and our speed is coming up notice that so let's go ahead and hit cruise it says cruise up here and you notice the fade x adjust and that's going to be too fast so we're going to need to bring this down to about 81 percent and that is going to keep us at about 300 knots when we accelerate so here we're going so we are now uh, off and running off to the yakima vor and we're going to start our, t our turn pretty soon, but let's get the rest of the radios configured. Next thing we're going to do is going to want to set the DME. So DME is distance measuring equipment. So I'm going to hit shift five to turn that off and turn on the DME. You click the DME button down here and there we are. Click that to set it and let's go ahead and set it. And the VOR is 115.0 for, for that airport. So 115 then down in the bottom right corner. There we are. There we are, MWH. So you can see here that our distance from MWH is 48 nautical miles. That's exactly what we want. Now we're going to set our ADF at the location of the outer marker. And let me show you where that is. So if we go over here and look at the airport, this right here is the outer marker. So the, this is the runway we're landing on right here. We're going to come in and try to land directly onto that outer, come right over that outer marker, which is perfectly aligned with the ILS course, and run there. So we're going to use that, uh, and the ADF, uh, which is Automatic Direction Finder, I believe is the acronym, is we're going to point that directly at, uh, at that outer marker. So let's go ahead and do that. So the ADF uh, frequency is 408. So we're going to go down here to fine tune. And then we're going to take and turn on this to ADF. And you're going to see our blue icon. So we're out of range of the ADF right now, so that's fine. Uh, this is pointing, Nav2 is pointing at the... Uh, so let's go ahead and start our turn. So we're going to turn on bank mode to slow down our rate of turn. And let's go ahead and move around. So I'm going to use the left, uh, the right mouse button to come around to about 85 degrees. And that's going to send us to the right of the airport, we're going to move, fly south of the airport, and then when we actually uh, get to about 90 degrees from the airport and we pick up the ADF, which is pointing at the outer marker, we're going to start a nice left turn to uh, go directly. We're going to slowly start moving our way in to intercept that ILS course. And let's see how we're doing. We're a little slow. Let's bring our speed up a little bit. Let's see how 83.5 does. Okay, let's look around the cockpit a little bit. So here's our radio panel. We have a, it's kind of nice. You can actually, if you have a failed screen, you can actually go and switch things there. That's the normal mode. Uh, these are the panel and overhead lights. Uh, there are, 
uh, the weather radar. So this is the radar controls, and it appears to work. I haven't actually played with it at all. Uh, I need to play with that at some point. But there is a weather radar, and you can change the uh, you can change the tilt angle on the radar, which is pretty cool. So let's turn that on. And I'll show you that. So it shows there that you've got it tilted down, so you can actually see what's below you and what's above you. Pretty slick. And so, and then there's a turbulence detector, which I haven't played with, and some non-functional buttons. Now this actually changes your, uh, what you're seeing on the dial here. So on your PFD, it shows changes the appearance of your, uh, of your, your uh, compass. And the ground speed indicator, you can switch that to time to time the destination. Uh, this is your, I believe, estimated time, elapsed time. Uh, you can uh, switch between nav and FMS mode. We didn't program the FMS, so we'll stay in nav. And that's basically it. Then we have the autopilot controls up here, which we've covered most of. Then we have our MFD here. So let me take and show you. So it's, let's, let's take a peek at the map. This is basically cheating, but that's okay. We're just trying to do a nice flight here. So you can see what we did here. We took off on runway heading. We adjusted towards the Yakima VOR, and then we started our left turn. And we're going to come around to about 85 degrees, and then we're going to start up here. Okay? Now, the way you do this in the airplane, if you want to see your map, is you can click on MFD, and this page, return to get all the way back, and then MFD, and then you click here to go to nav. And what this shows you, you see the range is too small. So I'm going to change this 2.5 by ch using this, this knob here. And there we are. So this right here is the outer marker for the airport. We can't see the, the VOR at the airport yet for some reason. But that's about right here, I think. Somewhere about there. We'll see that in a little bit. That will start appearing. And so we're going to try to align here and come right down there and hit that uh, hit that that course path right into the uh, the course right into the ILS so and you can change the, the the range here by using this knob now another thing is you can turn on airports uh, one rather odd bug in this airplane I'm gonna bring the speed back a little bit is the this airport we're going to does not show up when we select airport very weird I think it might be because the VORs are so close but so we're gonna leave airport off we're gonna just put it in nav mode and the data button turns on and off the labels so we'll just leave that on. Uh, we are looking good. So we're at 20,000 feet. Let's go ahead and start our descent. So what we're going to do, you notice that this, we don't start descending when we do this. I'm going to take and left, uh, right click the left side of the button and go down to 5,000 feet. The manual goes down, tells you to go down to like 2,000 or 2,500 feet, but I'm not going to do that. And I'll explain to you in a little bit why I'm going to do that. Now, instead of using, we could use V-Speed, we're going to use FLC. And you notice that we immediately get a pitch down for 2,000 feet. So way the, and I'm bringing my speed back because we don't want to go over 300. Now, the way the FLC mode works in the descent is it takes and uh, runs at 2,000 feet per minute until you hit 10,000 feet, at which point it kicks back to 1,000 feet per minute to slow the airplane down. Uh, it's generally fine. Uh, if you want to be precise, you really want to use V-speed and calculate your distance uh, the distance you need to descend and do all those calculations that I talked about in the Phenom video. But for the purpose of this flight, I think we're fine with this. Uh, it, is a, it is a nice feature and it works very nicely. Uh, well done field error with this. Uh, so we're 60 nautical miles from the airport. We are nice and steady on our course. Let's see if we can see that. We can't see that other airport yet. So let's go ahead and start sliding in. I'm gonna bring, bring things left to about 70 degrees and see if we can get closer to the airport. Now we don't have our ADF showing up. We don't have our, we have ADF on, but it's not showing here, so we're not in range. We don't have the, uh, we don't have the VOR, uh, the v we aren't picking up the VOR, so we're out of range. So we need to get a little bit closer to the airport so we can do that. Let's see how we're doing. So we're descending, we're at almost 300 knots, looking good. Uh, bearing of 69 degrees, 2,000 feet per minute. Everything is looking good. Uh, back to why I choose to, I want to intercept the glide slope of about 5,000 feet. And the reason I want to do that is this airplane is, I touched on it slightly when we were taking off, but it is extremely unstable on the ground. Uh, if you touch the rudder, if you touch the brakes, 
the airplane really starts going wacky in a way that you know is probably completely unrealistic if if the airplane were as sensitive as it seems to be there would be multiple fatal runway incursions or uh deviations i'm not sure what they call them i've forgotten now but uh the airplane would be sliding off the runway left and right because it's super hard to keep it on the runway if uh, uh with the rudder so i would like to be at 5,000 feet capture the ils and let the ils take me down in as stable as possible manner uh because otherwise it's extremely hard to, to hit that runway center line it's really annoying uh so i'm going to slide a little bit left here let's go to 50 degrees See if we can pick up a signal here. So now we have the uh, now we have the DME for uh, we have that. So we're 55 nautical miles from the airport. We are coming down. We're at 14,500. So, so you'll see when I get closer. But basically, I'm going to let the autopilot take me as close as possible before I actually go ahead and switch over to manual control. Uh, there we go. We are looking good. We still cannot see the the actual airport VOR here. Let's bring our speed back. Getting close to 10,000, let's go ahead and turn on the APU. So we're going to do that by sliding that to the right. Uh, we're going to turn on our landing lights. And APU is starting nicely, looking good. Speed is still a touch high. Let's slide it down. So you notice we're still at 2,000 uh, feet per minute. When we hit 10,000 feet or slightly above, it's going to start slowing down quite a bit. So, let's see. We are looking pretty good. There we are. So you can see there, right there, this guy is the airport. So we want to take and fly directly on this bearing to actually capture the ILS signal. So it basically goes right there. So we have a little bit, little bit farther to go before we can do that. So hopefully we're going to pick up the ADF soon. Let's make sure our frequency is right. It's 408. 408, that's correct. ADF-1 is set here. Uh, our, we have our NAV-1 on for 109.5, which, uh, which is the frequency of the uh, frequency of the ILS system. Our speed is coming down because we're starting to come close to 1,000 feet, and you notice the airplane is starting to slow its rate of descent. Notice we have a radar altimeter set here at 200, uh, 200 feet AGL. It's going to tell us we're at minimums. You can actually take and tweak that here. Uh, let me show you that. So you can go and tweak there if you want. I think 200 feet is acceptable. Uh, we could look at the chart. I actually have that available. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not going to try to figure that out right now, but that is the chart for it. It comes, it's nice. The, the packages come with all the details you need to really do a complete flight. So really well done. Okay, so I'm going to start sliding a little bit left, maybe come to about 30 degrees. And we're going to start getting closer and closer to the airport. So we're 47 nautical miles out. And I'm a little surprised we're not seeing the ADF on here. Let's uh, let's check this. Nope, no ADF yet. Well, that's okay. Okay, we're at 9,000 feet, 288 knots. It's not a, necessarily a bad speed. So back to what I love and don't love about this airplane. Uh, I love the systems. I think they're generally very good. Uh, I love the manual. Uh, I hate the ground handling. So we're under 10,000 feet, so we need to bring our speed back. So let's go back to 250. We're going to get high speed alerts if, uh, if we don't bring it back. Uh, I hate the second flight. It's really, really crappy. Uh, but the the... Okay, so we are looking good. So let's go ahead and start turning in more. I think we're going to need to be about 10 degrees here. So we're going to want to fly and intercept that course right about there. There's some more traffic up there. Uh, I really don't like the ground handling, though, you know, it's a challenge. It's just kind of fun. So there we go. So we just picked up the ADF. So when this ADF, that's pointing at the outer marker, this is the course of the, the ILS. Since that is on the line, 
when the this line is perfectly aligned with this, that means we're perfectly aligned with the with the ILS horizontal component. So as you as we keep flying on this course, you're going to see this is going to keep creeping down, creeping down, creeping down, and then we want to basically turn right onto it as soon as we uh, as soon as these two are perfectly aligned, and that should get us very very close to the to the ILS slope and then once we acquire the ILS you'll see it'll pop up and it'll show us the deviation we have from that ILS course and we can just adjust slightly. So everything is looking good. We are, uh, APU is on, our flaps are up, our gear is up. Let's take a look at the outside of the airplane. There we are. You can see it's a rather cold winter day in western Washington, United States. It's January right now, so that's probably pretty representative. I'm sure it's a very cold place to be. So, nice model, nice model. Okay, let's go ahead and turn back on our 2D panel with Shift-1. So, you can see it's creeping closer and closer, so we can start bringing it slightly left. Uh, so we can start to intercept that course. down to 7,000 feet. It's amazing how uh, things slow down once you uh, once you get down to 1,000 feet per minute. Okay, getting a little closer. Let's creep a little bit more. 36 nautical miles. Let's keep our speed up. There's no reason to bring it down yet. We can really be pretty close to 250 knots at this point in our descent. Uh, I like a rate of descent. We're almost on to the course. Let's go ahead and go a little bit more. So we don't overshoot. There we go. And you can see that this confirms it. Like if we are perfectly aligned, this is going to be when we're shooting straight at the airport, these two should be perfectly aligned. So I think we're ready to come over now. 240 knots. All's good there. 6,000 feet. Uh, we should see we're about five, six, seven miles away from seeing the ILS. So we'll hear the beeping. There's the warning telling us we're almost to our assigned altitude. And that is looking good. And look at that. So we're just going to be really nicely aligned. We're slightly, we can be slightly off to the side. really makes it easy to have the instruments. If you know how to use them and you can visualize the situation, it makes it very easy to fly these flights. Uh, there we are. That's pretty much perfect. There we are. So you can see A, A select just went on because we're about to level off at our, uh, at our altitude. Notice as we're starting to, to decrease our descent rate, our speed is coming down. Good, so we're going to see that, we're going to hear the beeping any second now. So I'm going to turn off the ADF, clean it up. And speed is coming down. Now one of the things I love about field air in general, and this is something, that, you know, I talked about Carinado a little bit. The Carinado approach acquisition is awful. It just really has a hard time acquiring the uh, going into approach node and, and grabbing the localizer. So we're slightly left, so let's go ahead and go left. Now, right now, I could hit the approach button, APR, and it would grab the glide slope. It would grab the localizer, even though we don't have the vertical component. It really works nicely. There we go. So we just picked it up. So let's go ahead and turn off nav one. So we now audibly, if we hadn't seen this, pick up. Let's go slightly left. So I could hit APR right now and it would fly over to that glide, uh, to that horizontal component of the localizer and, uh, and fly right down it. So let's go ahead and hit it. So watch this, it's just gonna grab it really nicely and settle right on. Even though we don't have the, 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 the glide slope, the vertical component yet, it's gonna grab that and hold on to it. Uh, if we had been descending, 
uh, it wouldn't have been a problem. If we were ascending, it wouldn't be a problem. It really is solid and, uh, and well engineered. So now here we are. We, are, we can move our range in a little closer. Now one thing we want to do is we want to go to speeds and we want to calculate our final approach speed. And this is based on weight. So 133 knots. So this might fall by perhaps one knot, but our goal is going to be as we're in the last couple miles of the approach, we really need to be at that speed and we need to be going over the numbers of that speed before we chop our throttles. So we're looking good. We're 21 nautical miles out. You notice that the glide slope indicator just came on. So we're underneath the glide slope. It's up here. And as we fly straight and level, we're going to capture that glide slope. And this is going to come down. You notice we have a white GS here. That means it's in glide slope acquisition mode. And as soon as it this crosses here, this it will, will get a little beep. And this will turn green and we'll, the airplane will start, uh, the autopilot will start flying it right down that glide slope. Piece of cake. Now, we're gonna wanna be at about 180 knots when we hit the glide slope. And we are uh, pretty much on target to do that. So we are looking good. There is the outer marker. There is the VR at the airport. Uh, everything looks great. So we have our, let's check everything. So we have, we have our APU on, we have our landing lights on, uh, navigation lights are on, seatbelt on, everything is looking good. Let's go back to our, this panel, looking tight. So let's, we're gonna start seeing that glide slope come down any second now, because we're 17 nautical miles out. Let's make sure our speeds haven't changed. There we are, so 132 is gonna be our approach speed. And that's, you notice it's coming down as our weight of the airplane comes down, the, the V speeds come down, the, v, uh, the approach speed comes down. We can go ahead and return. And looking good. Okay, we're at 187 knots, the glide slope's coming down. Let's go ahead and get some flaps in here. Let's go flaps one, which is, I believe, nine degrees pitch. And there we go, flaps nine. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. We have flaps nine, we're about to hit the glide slope. Our speed is coming down a little bit too fast. Let's go ahead and get another notch of flaps. Now you're gonna hear Hear that beeping? That means the glide slope is acquired. And you notice it now says green glide slope up there and voila, there is our airport. Uh, we're looking good. Now let's prepare for a missed approach. So what we wanna do there is set our, uh, set for runway heading. And the way you do that is you right click, center click with a center scroll wheel on the heading button and that sets the heading button right to our runway heading, which is what we're on right now. Then we're gonna set our altitude since we don't need to hold that anymore. We're gonna, let's set it for 3,000 feet. And if we looked at the approach plate, we'd see the mixed, uh, the missed course. Let's take a quick peek at that just for shits and giggles. Uh, so the mist is, uh, climbed 1800, then climbing right turn to 4,000 on MWH radial 054. Okay. We're not going to go set all that up, but let's go ahead and set up our 1800. If we were in a real approach here, we would set that up. We'd set up the nav radios to actually acquire that radial and to fly that course. So you notice our speed is coming up and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and bring it down. We're going to drop our gear. 10 miles out, we just really want our gear down, so we're a little close. 9.9 .9 nautical miles out. Notice our speed comes down nicely. Radar its altimeter is working. Let's go ahead and give it another notch of flaps. And once we're under 180. Okay. And we are nicely stabilized. Look at that. We're right on the glide slope, right on the horizontal component. We're basically flying, the airplane's flying a perfect approach. So we are getting to about seven nautical miles. At five nautical miles, we really want to start being aggressive and getting our flaps down and getting onto that uh, onto that final approach speed. 
which is uh, 122 knots. And you can see that bugged on the uh, on the speed tape. So here we go. We're six six miles. Let me go ahead and give it another notch. Okay, that's just the altitude warning for if we have to go missed. Okay, flats 45 are completely down. Landing gear is down, flaps are down. Uh, we don't have any auto brakes to set. Our speed's coming a little low. Uh, we don't have any auto brakes to set. We don't have any, uh, any uh, uh, spoilers to arm. They just actually automatically, as soon as the rear wheels hit, they arm. Uh, we're good. So we're five nautical miles out. We're at 1,300 feet. So I think that, uh, that distance is a little wrong. So here's what we're going to do. At 500 feet, typically, I would hit the yaw damper button to turn off the autopilot, and I would manually control it in. Uh, this airplane is so unstable, I'm just going to let it go all the way down to minimums before I turn off the autopilot. So at 200 feet, I'm going to hit the, the yaw damper button, and that will put the airplane in my hands, and I'm going to try to not do anything other than just put it on the runaway. It's, uh, as I said before, it's incredibly unstable, and so we really want to hit that center line. And I'll do the best I can. I practice this airplane landing a lot, and it's probably the most difficult airplane I've ever tried to land. It's uh, really difficult. And we missed there, but we actually got an out of marker indication when we flew over MW. So there we are. Our speed is perfect. Our horizontal component is perfect. Our glide slope is perfect. Our flaps are, per are down, and our gear is up. We're at 500 feet above. This is where I would typically would be going manual, but we're not going to do it. Speed is perhaps a touch too low, so let's give it a little more juice. Okay, 300 feet above. We're going to start getting some warnings from our... Minimums. 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 Yacht amper off. Autopilot. And so we're going to flare at 50 feet 100. above. Okay, having to adjust a little bit. Nice flare. We want to hit perfectly center. And this is where you want to be really careful because this airplane gets really squirrely fast. So I'm holding F2 to reverse thrust. And, you know, not the prettiest language. Uh, not the prettiest landing, but man, on this airplane, that's, uh, that's a pretty good landing. It's, uh, it's tough. So there we are. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to taxi off the runway. This, uh, this terminal is such a long taxi away, it's ridiculous. So I'm just going to go ahead and park it here and show you how to power it down. And that's it. So control period to put on the parking brake. Bring up the throttle quadrant. We're going to clean up the flaps by hitting F5. We are going to, uh, we're going to turn on the uh, gust lock by clicking on this little part. And let's go to the overhead. We're going to turn off the engines. There we go. We're going to turn off the, turn that off. We're going to turn off the APU. We're going to turn off the various pumps. And now the APU is off. And we can close these. Turn off the lights. Uh, turn off the ELT. Fasten seatbelts, no smoking, logo, and nav off. And that is it. We now have a dark and cold airplane. So I hope you enjoy that. I, I really enjoy these flights, these uh, feel their flights. I think they're, uh, they have their own level of challenge because you're you know, learning a little bit about navigation, a lot about a very specific airplane. Uh, I really, really like them. So I recommend that if you don't own this airplane, pick it up and walk through this with me. Uh, if you do own it, just walk through it. Try to learn as much as you can by following along with me. Uh, I strongly recommend reading the manual. Uh, for those of you that are interested, please uh, please let me know if you want the FMS training flight too. Uh, I'd be, uh, I'll try to spend some time figuring that out if you do want to see it. So anyway, thank you for joining me on another flight, and I will see you on the next one.